Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Global Adventure Show with travel writer Debbie Stone. Hey, everybody. Uh, today, we are going to Gettysburg with Debbie Stone. Uh, you know, Debbie Stone, we do call her the fire monkey. I always have to bring that up. Um, she got that name from a monk in Bhutan, so that has stuck with her for years, literally years. Right, Debbie? Years. Years. I can't even. Yes. When, how long has it been <laughs> since you were in Bhutan? I mean. Many years. Many yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even think back that long. But, you know, I, I actually kind of think that's interesting. Going back to Bhutan, here's the you know, this land of temples, right? And right. now we're going to go to Gettysburg and it's a place Nance and I went to during COVID. We've covered Gettysburg for years with artists in residence through the National Parks Arts Foundation and also covered many um, just things like stories through the National Parks uh, Conservation Association as well. So Gettysburg has it was been on our, our radar for years and then finally we got there during COVID. And um, it was... It was a little bit more closed down compared to what you experienced. And I think some things were open, but we were just like at that point, like it was like a zoo and we weren't that comfortable because it was still like high COVID time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited to talk with you about this today because not only do you have a story about Gettysburg National, you know, it's a battlefield and national military park, but you also talk about the community, which I think is very, very important that people forget about. And um, you talk about food. So we're going to do food and military history, right? <laughs> Civil War history. Both. <laughs> I know, I know. But um, I feel like Gettysburg is one of those places, like we got there. And in, I mean, this was a bucket list thing after all these interviews for years. So many artists had talked about being in the Klingle house and being haunted. People had blood on the walls in the middle of the night, just appeared, like all kinds of weird stories. Like, I mean, lots of stuff happened in Gettysburg and we got there and I just almost just really just needed to sit down and reading your article and everyone, it's on nationalparktraveling.com. Debbie's articles are linked in the show notes. Um, you use the same word overwhelm. And that's how we both felt like this heavy. And I don't want to make people not go, but like it's intense, like going there that's an intense experience it is I, I i i tell people that talk to me about gettysburg that have never been and i say yes for first timers it is overwhelming um and what i say is that if you can spend a little bit of time there so that you're not trying to race through in 24 hours and see everything you can because it will it will get to you it will impact you uh, and this is the kind of place where I think you need time to digest the sights, uh, some of the heavy, you know, heaviness of uh, what happened here. And it, I just think if people have a couple of days to spend, I think they will find it to be a much more uh, rewarding experience for them. And mm -hmm. they will be able to take breaks from uh, a lot of the historical sites. And, and as I mentioned in my other story about food, um, you know, they'll be able to enjoy the town, you know, they'll be able mm. to peruse the town and, and eat and get some sustenance before they head back out again. Hey, I heard it's haunted there, too. I'm just saying. I just heard <laughs> Good. through the grapevine. <laughs> but, you know, but going to Gettysburg, we stayed in Tawny Town at uh, uh, just a wonderful bed and breakfast, George's on York. And um, now he really knew the, the innkeeper because he really knows Gettysburg. And he's like, you've got to do this hike and do that hike. But then we got stuck at the farm at um, Eisenhower's farm on the way in. I know you didn't spend a lot of time there, but you stopped by. But he had an affinity for this place. And I wonder about Eisenhower having his farm there and seeing Gettysburg, if that kind of kept him on his toes during World War II of understanding, having that overwhelmed feeling of understanding the severity of war, you know? That's, um, you know, that's a good good question. I know that it was a retreat for him uh, when he mm -hmm. was uh, a president for uh, him and his wife. Uh, but it was also he used it as a kind of a a um, 
a more of a casual meeting place for world leaders. Mm-hmm. So it, it really was a way to kind of calm those Cold War tensions at the time. And so he would host these world leaders, notable world leaders, and they would come there, and mm-hmm. he, they would have these, like, off-the-record, just informal chats. And he would take them around, and they would talk about family, and they would talk about, you know, farming. They would talk – and so it, it really was a place for him to not only have for himself and his wife, but also to invite people of, of – major importance in the world but to to have it as a different setting as as a mm. as a backdrop for them and where maybe you know versus being in DC you know and mm. so uh i think that and then he ended up retiring there as as well it was uh you know it was a, a very special place to him you know what i find interesting about that and gettysburg is like he brought it he was like let's get away from white house and and all the you know the pentagon and all that kind of stuff let's just go to a farm and and talk and be humans and have unity like so i'm going to use that word because even in gettysburg when you see all the monuments for all the states for the different native american tribes that all fought in the war right there is a sense of unity as well even though it's a harsh war and civil war, but people all fought. And so you can't have war without unity on some sides, right? You know what I mean? It's like a really weird, like heroes and villains, you know, um, war and peace. And I feel like he, he, there was this beautiful solitude there because it is, it's pastoral. It's picturesque. It is beautiful. It is peaceful. It is quiet. Um, I think Gettysburg is just, I mean, I would live, I want to live there. We actually interviewed a, a musician from there and, and the Mason Dixon line went, went through her backyard. Um, and, and she, she just, it was pretty crazy to be, you know, part of that history growing up. But I think that's interesting about there's the overwhelm of going there and realizing this deep, deep history but there is also a sense of unity. Does that make sense to you, or is it just me off of my own little weird land of I hope? I think people come together. They realize when they come to a place like that that um, it, it, is, it is such a, a treasured place in history um, where something very monumental happened. Um, and I think you know people from all over the place uh, will come there because – they want to see this hallowed ground and they want to learn more about it, even though, you know, as students in the United States, we do learn about, of course, the Gettysburg Battle and we learn about the Gettysburg Address. But when you bring people to a place where, where so much history happened and where this was such a defining moment in the Civil War, um, it, it really is. It's it's Oof. very yeah yeah, and it was the the largest bloodiest battle ever fought on our country's soil, and so there is a sense of you know just of of realizing this happened here, and yes, the place is beautiful in, t- in terms of its bucolic and and its mm-hmm. rolling hills, and you look at this place and you think all this beauty, and you think this this really bloody battle happened on these beautifully peaceful grounds uh you know for three hot summer days in july in 1863 and it just i know uh, right (laughs) and for me um you know just driving you know if you drive around the battlefield you see Mm. the monuments the the best thing for me if i have advice for people is to take a tour of the the military park And you can take it via many different ways. You know, you can go by, you can walk it, you can go by uh, the tour bus, you can go by your car with a self-guided tour, you can take your bike, your Segway, Mm. you can do horseback. I did the horse-drawn carriage. I kind of liked the idea of making it more, uh, making the ambience a little bit more historical. And also, I loved the idea of of witnessing this at the quote-unquote speed of history. And Mm. uh you know, you have these guides that are all licensed guides. They are extremely knowledgeable. They bring out the maps. They talk to you about the battle plans. They talk to you about the action. They talk to you about the people and the individuals, and they provide you with so many interesting tidbits that you would never, ever 
you know, learn unless you had somebody telling you about this. And, you, you know, you stop and you walk on some of the, the places where these, these, these brave men, they, they sacrificed in the name of freedom. And, you know, to me it was, I don't know, to me it was, it was well worth it to get a, a guide. Uh, however you mm. do it, uh, I think it's important because the knowledge is, is incredibly uh, impactful, I think. Yeah, I I really wish that we had that experience too because like we drove up literally found the Klingle house which, which is where the artists were in residence at that time and um then all of a sudden people are on horseback and we're like what what like it almost was like living history happening right now and right. then we just started exploring and it, it and the, we wanted to do the cyclorama because we've done a story on that um well we didn't write it but uh, artist Victoria Chick did and we did a podcast on it and we're like, wow, that was a huge deal. And you got to go there um, and also go into like really like the visitor center museum. Right. So yes. would you say it, like start there? We didn't get to do yes. any of that. Cause again, this was like, I think we were there the first weekend that COVID was like in that opened area up. opened. Yeah. yeah. So, it, and it was crazy, but I heard people on their phones to their grandparents going is this the name is this you know great yes. great grandfather and stuff yes. and i was like holy cow like teary you know because you realize like people are there tracing their family history yes. Yes. in this war it's it's, it's it, i would say start at the uh, museum and visitor center and go through the process of, of doing the film there's a film narrated by morgan freeman which kind of sets the stage and, uh, and and then there's, as you mentioned, the Gettysburg Cyclorama, which is truly an amazing experience. It's a light and sound show, and it's, you know, you get to experience this whole uh, Pickett's Charge and the battle, and it's it's mm. unbelievable, and it's so massive and so immersive. It's amazing, and and uh, it, to me, I I was I was taken aback by it. I really wanted to spend a lot of time in there. You can find little characters. They, 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 make, they take certain sections and they highlight them. And it was a masterpiece, a masterpiece for me. And then from there, you can go right on into the Museum of the American Civil War, uh, where you're going to have wonderful artifacts. You're going to have lots of stories, lots of items on display. And, you know, you could spend hours and hours in there, uh, and some people do, and other people kind of do it on a periphery uh, situation. It depends on how much time, but I felt like I needed to spend a lot of time in there mm. because it was amazing. The, the artifacts were, were quite amazing. And then you can head into the park, as I mentioned, and, and do take some sort of tour if you can. And then uh, after that, you should go into the National Cemetery because this is the oh. final resting place for all of those 3,500 Union soldiers that were killed in the battle. And it's, it's very sobering, especially the ones that are the unknown soldiers. There's markers for the unknown yep. soldiers. And uh, you can see where Lincoln delivered uh, the Gettysburg Address. You can stand on that actual spot. And, uh, you know, that, that whole process of going through the visitor center and all the different things and then going to the military park and then going into the cemetery, it, it it's a it's a process that takes you through, I think, in a very – uh, a, a very good uh, kind of a seamless way to 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 uh, explore the area. I, I I was wondering about you because you went to Springfield. Um, yes, in mm -hmm. Illinois, and right. you went through all you know all of Lincoln's history, basically all the museums yep. and everything, and um, and you came back with things that you know kind of challenged what we all kind of like regular beliefs of what even the civil war was about. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, right. I was thinking about that today before we started recording, I was like, Oh, remember when you went there and you're like, Oh, we thought this, but this is what the civil war is really about. And you know, there was more to it than what we all kind of got taught. And I, I just wonder like when, when we went there, I think, I don't know if we'd done Springfield before or after, but I remember like the Lincoln, going to the Gettysburg Address and being there and, and just like, wow, like this is Lincoln stood here. And, and everywhere right. I'd been in Illinois or in like, there's like a whole Lincoln trail, you know, that you can follow Kentucky, through the state. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All yep. through it, all of it. it there's a highway, yep. but there's like a, like there's certain cities we've been to and towns 
that are part of some historic thing for Lincoln. And he was here, mm-hmm. he delivered a this speech or we know, and um like little towns. And yeah, I have to yeah. put it all together, but um I it was just really wild to be in this famous place. And you know, growing up in South Africa as a teenager, you knew about there was the civil war and Gettysburg happened. And I think it was in the eighties when the movie Gettysburg came out and I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. that's what went down. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. was pretty much probably the best knowledge I had. Mm-hmm. And then going there, it was just like, Whoa, like I said, overwhelming and, and real. And then of course, like you were saying, all the unknown um, graves, uh, uh, Lisa saw me as a, a, a poet that's been on our show and she's done books um, talking about the unknown soldiers and the women behind the unknown soldiers and giving voice to the voiceless. That's what she's about. And it's like, and, when you hear and, these people's stories, it's like, whoa, you know? And, and to me, to me, um, the other side of this whole story is the townspeople and what they were going through and mm-hmm. what, what they, they paid a very steep price. They were in the middle, they were caught in the middle of this. And uh, thankfully, uh, uh, only one person perished as a result. Uh, one local person perished. That was a, a non, you know, a resident, a, a local non-military individual who perished. But their lives were upended because they were left uh, tending to the thousands of soldiers that were left behind, who were sick and ill and dying. And the townspeople. Uh, the, some of their houses and so many of the buildings were turned into hospitals and they had to help deal with the wounded, uh, the aftermath. And they were, they, you know, they had to, to step up there and nobody else was going to. These, these soldiers were left behind. And so t- to uh, learn about the, the, I think the locals to me was the most, I don't know, eye-opening because people forget about that. They just think about the, the military, the social, the soldiers and, and what, price they paid, but the townspeople were really caught in the middle here. And so I suggest and recommend that people, in addition to doing the military history, that they visit some of these house mm-hmm. museums in town because they talk about the people and like I the like Shriver that. House Museum or the Jenny Wade House Museum. And you go in and you get these wonderful tours by these uh, these docents and they tell you about the people and what happened in the house and what happened to these people and how they uh, how this impacted their lives and so i i urge people to to seek out some of these house museums there's several of them and, and there's one that's uh, a saloon yeah. right the shriver saloon yeah the Shri- i have well, to the say Shriver. hey listen the a- shrivers are part of our family name i'm just saying i'm gonna now have to do <laughs> no i didn't know this until you put it in your article i'm like i'm gonna really? go have to look up our yeah our we have a whole oh, side of our family is the shrivers and how do we know that we're, we're not related Hey, and they have a saloon. That sounds good. <laughs> they were, you know, they had a saloon. And what was interesting is, um, you know, the, the husband was called into service uh, when the battle began. And his wife left and took the two young daughters and they went to the family's farm. And uh, they returned several days later and they found that their house had been changed and turned into a, a commander to be into a hospital. And so you'll also, what I found fascinating in this is not only the saloon in the basement, but upstairs there was a Confederate sniper nest in the attic where Confederate soldiers uh, were hiding out, but they were uh, uh, snipers. And so they were shooting through uh, the attic walls. And so there's been the detective CSI. They've come with more modern forensics. They've confirmed the bloodstains. Um, they've seen the Civil War bullets that have been found there. There's hidden medical supplies, which shows the, the proof of the house used as a hospital. So it's, it's fascinating for people. I mean, people were on, uh, they were on edge listening to the docent, docent talk about the story and what happened there. It, it was fascinating. And I think people are really, they really crave that human uh, element, you know? Well, it, it, you've got to go there. You know, you can't read about Gettysburg. I mean, obviously read in the article, but the whole point of the article in this podcast is to get your butts there to understand it, right? And if yeah. not, if not, at least and absorb even, absorb some more than high school. And I, I think these stories are so, like, Monica C., I think I'm saying it right, um, after all these years of going there, um, is is not far from Gettysburg. So, like, the mm-hmm. Civil War, like, 
I need to do a map of the Civil War sites somehow on our site and, and put it together because we went to Monacacy. It was like we were on, you know, a road trip again. And and I was like, oh, let's go here. And then I found out, well, there's like a bunch of sites throughout this community, right? Kind of like Gettysburg in a way that, way, you know. And right. then when the Civil War happened, and this is what exactly what happened in Gettysburg, you're talking about the people. And I'm still, I talk about this on the show all the time. So for all those who have heard me say this, I'm very sorry, but it still freaks me out. You, here are farmers with their land and their kids doing their crops, doing their thing. It's not easy, already having a tough life. And then all of a sudden, here comes a civil war. Sorry, we're taking over your farmland. By the way, get your women and kids into the basement because we're blowing each other up, you know. And right. here they are with, they drag in, here we go with, you know, we're we're dragging in the ammunition. Here comes the big booms and um, I've been, a, I've filmed reenactments, civil war and reenactments. Mm-hmm. And when they start doing those kabooms, like even the tripod goes like, screw this, I'm out, <laughs> I'm down, yeah. you know, those kabooms are insane. And I'm going, the women and kids and the dads, I mean, you know, they wake up the next morning while I don't think anybody slept. How do you tell your kids? Yeah. People are just, you know shooting each other and it's, killing each other it's, it's how do you a, do a, that and and you know the story of jenny wade which she was the only yeah uh, local that was uh killed Huge. during uh, and and you know she went uh you know to help her sister who had, had a baby and the mother was there and and they were she was in the middle of making uh bread for the mm-hmm. uh union soldiers and uh, a bullet went through two doors and struck her as she was kneading the dough and she died right away and so you know you hear the story you see the bullet hole through the door you That's go up much. and you, you know it's 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 you know you see real. the shells that puncture the roof you you see it and it becomes very real to you and to me once again as i always say you know history comes alive when you go to the place where it happened you know when you see with your own eyes when you touch you feel you smell you you hear whatever it is but it it, it makes such a difference for people when they actually go somewhere where something actually happened that maybe they've read about, they've heard about, they've seen a movie about, but there they are in it. They're right there, real life. And, it, and have it, the it guys, like yes. you're saying, you have like a park ranger or a tour guide, go to the museum, have some yes. kind of interpretation. Of course. Like Gettysburg, like if you were like Nancy and I, like we're like sitting there like, dude, like yeah. our emo- emotionally, it was like intense. But we we also didn't get to have the full experience like you did, and I love that you did. And it it just if you can get into a ranger program, go with a guide like you know Debbie goes on horse carriage, you know, um, all of that. You you have those guides; they know that history, and whatever you remember, you think you remember. I'm just gonna say think you remember because let's be honest: when you get there, don't we? Realize that what we think we remember is not really it. <laughs> and then the guides will really tell you, and they are true storytellers, not tour guide, is a storyteller yes. who knows how to make it come to life and get it through our brains in a cool way. And I wish these storytellers were teachers, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, you know, they, they know, they know, they know how to inform in an entertaining manner in which to to you know hook you into the story and into what happened uh while while making sure you understand the facts of the of the story i mm-hmm. went also to another place called the daniel lady farm which was fascinating oh. this was another farm site where you know the the uh the, the farmer daniel lady and his wife and his seven children they all forced to evacuate because wow. uh, the confederate forces came and they used it as a staging area for an attack and then they also used the place as a confederate at field hospital during the battle so the house and this barn survived but you know you see the furniture in the home was chopped up and uh then there's a whole exhibit an area on civil war medicine which i found wow gruesome but fascinating and oh yeah you know they talk about all the methods that were used and the amputation uh procedure and boiled horse hair is used for stitches because the silk is gone and you know all this kind of stuff and and you're you you find out these very minute details but 
they are so, I don't know, they, they, they stay it's with It's real. They, it they, they it makes it you. real. Yeah, yes, so when you really watch, do. if you see anything about the Civil War again, and you've seen how, like, a leg has been amputated or, you know, really what happened, and you go to these sites, yeah. like, we were recently at a Civil War site about in Oklahoma, um, Honey Springs, and all sides fought each other. Indians fought each other. Blacks fought each other. Whites fought each other. Families included on both sides. I mean, mm -hmm. fought and attacked each other, which is a gruesome thing. And I went out there and we went to the visitor bureau and these visitor bureau, like the not visitor bureau, but the visitor centers and these museums are so state of the art these days, like museums right. as a kid, like move over these museums now and visitor centers, like they're, they're so, so interactive. interactive. Oh yep. God. Yep. You get it. I mean, us adults need it, man. Not just the kids. We need to oh, be woken up does. a little bit. Yeah. And it's a, it was amazing. And then, you know, I went out and, Went out in the battlefield at the time, like you're talking about, here's July. Like, you go out at that time frame, holy cow. You think about those soldiers going in the uh, July heat in, in Gettysburg. Yeah. And at that time then, I'm like, are you kidding me? No, no, no. There were snakes. There, I mean, let's just get real here. It wasn't just what was going on in the battle, but like wildlife and things were stirring. There was like... You, if you go into the places like you're talking about with the you finding out the how medicine worked at that time, you have this other um, idea how strong human beings can be, mm -hmm. truly, to get through things, and in battle. And um, I don't ever want to be in that predicament. Like to me, take me out. But then, I suppose you still fight for your life at that point. I mean, if they're no, gonna, I don't think. You, I don't know, you man. you don't have the choice. Sometimes you don't have the choice. It's, you oh, know, man. E either you act or you don't act, you know. But I think well, that uh, I, I, the, another uh, site that I really like to tell people, especially people who uh, are interested in haunted uh, attractions mm -hmm. or sites, is this wonderful bridge that's called Sachs Covered Bridge. And yeah. uh, a lot of paranormal investigators have been there and, it's it's kind of become a hot spot for the these uh sightings but it is does have a history there because um confederate soldiers were trying to get out of the war um by clothing themselves in union attire and getting away from things these were young men and they wanted you know many of them wanted to get out of this scene and so they would do anything to try to get away and so there was a trio, uh, three of them, that you know found some uh, clothing, Union clothing, put themselves in it, and they joined a northern troop, and they were marching mm -hmm. near this bridge. And obviously something happened, but their identities came to light, and immediately they were made an example, and they were hung from the bridge. And uh -huh. people supposedly, uh, you know, now have reported sightings of you know, of, of disembodied heads or they've had a, a scent of cigar smoke, which someone says is a, a soldier that continues to patrol the vicinity or they've heard distant gunfire, you know. So it, it really is one of those places. I went during the day. I did not go, in, go during the night but because uh, I wanted a really a, a good picture of that bridge. Plus, it is kind of a – it's kind of a, a – sits in itself in a little area. It's 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 uh um, you know, not not around a lot of things, and so I I said I think in my story, you know, beware if you go back at night, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I I want to go. I want to go, and I didn't even do that. But I don't think we did the bridge. I would. I know that when we were in Pennsylvania, I mean, no, we stayed in Maryland, but I mean, when we were in Pennsylvania, we did some covered bridges, and there was some right. They right. they all kind of have some interesting history, but I remember just. I don't know. Nancy and I just, we had that overwhelm. And I wish, I really wish we had the experience you had of going, even, even of all these interviews we've done over the years of going and getting that knowledge first before you start trekking out. Yeah. Truly. I think it's, it's, you, you, you need some basis and background before you do. Yeah. And I think it's, it's really a good idea to get that. And that's why I say start there, get your background knowledge. Yeah. 
Uh, the other museum that I do say is an interesting one, and it's brand new, and it is uh, Beyond the Battle, Gettysburg Beyond the Battle Museum. But they have an, uh, an exhibit or a, an experience called Caught in the Crossfire, which I found to be unbelievably visceral. It's uh, You are in this um, reconstructed farmhouse, and it's just, uh, you know, it's it's dark, it's dark because there are no lights, and, you know, there's a family, and this family is being overrun by invading forces, and they're trapped behind enemy lines. And you hear the noises, you know, of, of the, the gunfire and the voices and the hysteria and the panic, and it just puts you right there in the center of action. And it, it really is, I found mm-hmm. it to be an, just a very immersive but very visceral experience. And, uh, you know, it also had a very f- another fascinating exhibit, which is, the visitor that you go into this room and you see all these people's faces and you hear um amid the simulated noises of a crowd of these people who have just heard Lincoln's Gettysburg address and they're oh. reflecting on the speech and they're reflecting and they're offering their opinions and they're talking about Abe and and some people are you know very very much a uh, a fan of him and uh, of what he's saying and other people are are criticizing and criticism of, of him and it's it was very interesting and it's, it's wow. it, to me it was really fascinating so i thought that kind of you know, goes that, back to your was, springfield you know yes. yeah. visit yeah they kind yeah. of did that same thing where you're like Absolutely. i didn't realize that like whoa yep, yep. these opinions and yeah Wow, so it was interesting. Well, yeah, very, very interesting. So, yeah, wow. there's so much, there's so much to see. So, you know, t- I feel like you know, take a couple, couple days, take your time. I feel like it should be a Don't week. Don't rush it. I kind well, of feel you know, like I, Gettysburg should be a week because there's so for that region <laughs> should be a week, like five days well, or so, five to seven. Well, days. you can do a yeah, you can do a lot in the region and the surrounding areas as, as well. And like I said earlier, you can enjoy yourself in the town. It doesn't always have to be about the history. You can enjoy yeah. shopping. You can enjoy eating. You can enjoy, you know, staying in a wonderful oh, inn. I want to talk so about the inn. Numbers. We got to talk yeah. about the inn. We're going to talk about food, okay, because yes. this is a whole other thing because this, it just, that's the thing. Like Gettysburg, absolute heavy history, right? I mean, it right. really is. But you like, here is this community that has been there. Before the battle happened, right? Right. So this is a very important thing. And so I know you stayed at a bed and breakfast, and we want to hear about that. We love bed and breakfast and inn. And um, also we want to hear all about your foodie experiences because I think people need to see this other side. And I think the experience should be don't just go to the battlefield, look at a monument, and say you've done Gettysburg because you haven't. You know, we did a little bit of that. We still stayed and hung around. We stayed at bed and breakfast. It was in Twenty Town, but you know, George's on York. Shout out to them; they're awesome. But honestly, um, I'm glad we at least did what we did because sometimes that's the way travel is. But I feel like we needed to spend. I, I actually feel like five days. I just feel like I just wanted to get out and walk, and not drive. And yeah, I just felt very much like i needed to be connected to the land there for some reason like very well it's on the ground if if you notice and um one of the reasons and and we'll get to the food but one of the reasons this is a bounty of food here is because the area is so agriculturally intense Mm -hmm. and uh so you're getting you know all this wonderful fresh and seasonal food uh from all these surrounding farmlands and you know it it, it to me that was a wonderful uh aspect of it that I was really unaware of and I was not aware that they had this very dynamic food scene there so that was a surprise to me and a, of course a very pleasant one and you know you do need to get your sustenance uh to keep yourself going especially if you're doing a lot of walking and also trying to digest the information and so it's really wonderful to be able to get uh good food and to have a choice of good food and not only that but to have choice of of wonderful accommodations because there are so many wonderful inns and so many wonderful you know B&Bs and you know historic properties of course and I wanted of course to stay in a historic property because I wanted to mm. up that historic ambiance and, uh, you know, be amid a, a home that was historic. And so the Brafferton uh, Inn was my home base, and it is the oldest deeded house in 
the downtown area of Gettysburg, I think 1786. But what I loved about it, too, not only because it was historic, but I love the fact that you could just walk outside and you were right there and you could walk to so many different things. So it was, you know, you park the car and just walk to a lot of places in town, to shops, to galleries, to restaurants, to house museums, a lot of different different aspects. And the innkeepers, uh, the Hodges, were, were they've been running it for about 20 years, and they are terrific. And Brian, uh, in particular, is uh, he plays chef for the delicious breakfasts, which were, you know, several course mm-hmm. breakfasts and in you know it's just it's one of those things where you just you just kind of your the atmosphere and the environment it just kind of like it just seeps through it's wonderful just wonderful oh i love that i love and, and staying in an inn i mean i i always choose that if we can you know what i mean yeah. it it just sure. is it's that personal touch because you find the innkeepers know these stories yeah. you know and yeah. they know, like, if you want to do something, they'll have, like, an insider thing, you know. That, oh, yes, absolutely. You know, they really do. And I, I just feel like Gettysburg is, like, this quaint town. And like you're saying about the agricultural area, I mean, it really is. There's vineyards and stuff. So you start exploring the area. There's a wine region. There's Oh, it's I mean, fabulous. This yeah. was a farm area. And then the Civil War came and said, hey, we're smacking in on you. Yeah. You know, yeah. and but then the community still they 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 had to keep going no matter yeah. what to to survive. And I yeah. find this fascinating that um, well, I I just not necessarily fascinating, but like I love that that spirit of okay, this went down, but we're gonna survive, and we're not gonna bail, but we're gonna do it. You know? Um, oh yeah, I think these people the sense resist- of community. Yeah, yeah, sense of community and the just the sense of you know we are going to persevere and uh, we're, we're you know we're going to move on and and, and the Civil War have. was a good war for I mean a, 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 it was a war for good reasons good reasons with an S on the end of the reasons as Debbie talked I'm going to have to put the I'm going to put the links to Debbie's uh, story and interview on uh, Lincoln and Springfield because. I feel like it's so connected that we should Very do that. Very much so. Uh, yeah, Very I'm going to put so. that in the show notes for everybody. Um, but let's talk about the food because not only are you talking about here's this, you know, plethora of, you know, a, a bounty basically at the backyard of Gettysburg, right? Right. But a, a lot of this is happening in historic places and you got yeah. you went on a food tour. So again, we're back on tours, right? So this this was the Savor Gettysburg Historic Downtown Food Tour. So I liked it because, first of all, you're walking, you're eating, you're drinking, and you're getting a great dose of history from another very knowledgeable guide. And so, and insiders' tips and recommendations, and you know, all the establishments you stop at are locally, uh, you know, owned and operated. And you know, so you're getting a, a, a real wonderful sampling of. The food that is there, which, you know, there's different ethnic foods. There's, you know, people that, uh, you know, there's a Mexi- wonderful Mexican grill, the Tacos Monarca grill. Then there's an Irish pub, you know, so you're getting your shepherd's pie there. And, you know, then you're getting some new American, like, you know, real made from scratch and artisan type pizzas. And, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a real nice sampling i love crepes and the cottage creperie was uh, was heaven for me it's it you know wonderful uh place and then you learn about the owner and you learn about you know why crepes why did she start crepes creperies and uh, you know and then you go you know and taste the cider because there are so many apples it's just insane uh how many you know apple orchards there are and how many different you know type names and types of apples and so there are cideries there's wineries as you mentioned you know there's ice cream and you know so you're getting a great sampling and uh but you're getting that great dose of history and you're walking so that helps as well (laughs) i love that i love that now i want to talk about the mexican restaurant because i know you're based in santa fe new mexico and yeah. when we started our tour, I was afraid of coming east because of avocados and Mexican food. Like, <laughs> am I going to die over, like, am I going to, like, literally, right. like, right. what's going to happen? Because I know there's a lot of seafood back east, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, Nancy and I can't, you 
love fish and and seafood right. and but you know we're not good with that allergy wise um so my my thing was like okay she's talking about mexican food there and hey listen i know a lot of people who know how to make awesome mexican food all over the country now and i've learned yeah grow up um we have wonderful mexican families and hispanic families all across our nation so don't be an idiot like me wondering um and so you can find no you can find i believe that you know if you find good mexican food you're usually finding people that you know have have either come from the country or their second generation, but there are recipes that have been in their family. And so it is a, a, a traditional, it's authentic fare. And this was a case at Tacos Menarca. And so I think in my mind, you know, it really, you, you can plant a Mexican restaurant wherever. It depends on who's, who's running it, who's cooking, you know what I mean? Who's, who, who has it in their blood, you know? And, uh, mm. and, and, and the same with, the, you know, the, for example, the Gary Owen Irish pub. It's, it's the only Irish owned pub there in town, but it's, you know, it's owned and operated by a couple who are originally from Ireland. And so, you know, you're getting, you're getting authenticity. You're getting the authentic Irish fare and you're getting Irish whiskeys and, and, you know, Guinness pours and, uh, you know, the bangers and mash and all, all, you, all of that. Listen, you don't have to convince me anymore. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> but now wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. What about being in the buildings? Because aren't a lot of the buildings historic? And so does that add to the eating ambiance? Yes, yes. And in fact, um, a lot of those buildings are, I found, you know, there, there's, um, for example, Mr. G's, which is an ice cream place, a well-known ice cream place in town. Um, it's in this historic Twin Sycamores house, which is basically 1819. So you are, you know, you, once again, you're getting your ice cream in this historic place. And out front uh. is one of the town's witness trees. And these were trees Ooh. that were alive when the Battle of Gettysburg occurred, and they're still standing today. And, and you know, they are, you know, if only they could talk, because I'm sure they saw a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you're getting, I, I love that, that whole dose of, of history, but you're also connecting with the people. So I found that to be a real treat, uh, you know, as well. So, um, yeah, that was wonderful. But I think also for me, uh, eating at some of these historic um Places these historic homes were were also a real a, a real treat for me. Like the Dobbin House Tavern, which is Gettysburg's oldest and most historic house, and it is a, a, a wonderful place. It's it, and the the house looks supposedly the same as it did over 200 years ago, and it's been you know lovingly restored. The waitstaff wear period, period clothing. You know, the they they take the china and flatware are an exact match with the fragments which were found there, and you know they do a colonial menu, and it's it, to me it was wow. just a delightful delightful experience, and. Then, you know, another one was this this wonderful mansion house, uh, which is outside of Gettysburg, another historic property that has a, a, a real colorful history because it was used uh, by uh, General Robert Lee, E. Lee ate there uh, while they were retreating. And so, you know, good food, wonderful good food. And I, I, I think I mentioned in my story, it's a good thing you do a lot of walking in Gettysburg because mm-hmm. the food is so good. <laughs> I've heard the ice cream place that you're talking about is like really incredible. Oh, so good. Yes. So like good. that. Good. So good. I mean, you, you just come back from Venice and you had gelato and like, <laughs> so you went to Gettysburg and, and you think the ice cream was that good. Ice cream went was from very Ven- good. See, it was, oh. it was it was very creamy. I love creamy. Ah, oh, real you know? real yeah. ice cream then, not yeah. that stuff yeah. that doesn't melt. Real, you stuff. know, it's like the good slow churn, you know, ice cream. So oh. you know, I'm I'm a sucker for ice cream, and I'll I will try it most everywhere, and and uh, because I want to see what it's like in various different places, because it is different in different places, you know, whether it's I, it is in this country or around the world, you know what I mean. I've heard so. that you really just can't make gelato here like you can make it in Italy. You just can't. I kind of, it's I just... kind of agree. I, 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 I will say that Italy's gelato is just the top for me. There's you know? something about <laughs> the ice and the salt and the temperature and I, 
I don't know I, chemically what happens, but I'll tell yeah, you. The Italians seem I to listened know what to, to do. something. <laughs> I listened to a podcast on it and went like, "This is like I did not know all this, but apparently yeah. Debbie had a good time eating it, so that's okay." <laughs> to me, that's so long as she had a good time, you know. Yeah. And our yeah. listeners have a good time when they get over there. But this is fascinating. I think you know, and and this is what's so cool to me about your Gettysburg food scene article is that and I know you've done the same thing you've gone to historic cities and then they have like the few touristy restaurants and the few touristy restaurants are basically like touristy traps with really you're going to maybe have one good restaurant and then here's the other ones which are like you might as well bring McDonald's in which I, I think suck you know um, right. And, and I mean, this is going to, it just, it, every place is different, right? So I'm, I'm not knocking what everybody can do, but. I um, think also, uh, it needs you know to be what qualified I mean? be, because uh, it needs to be qualified because there are some restaurants that are so well known, like the Dobbin House is extremely well known and it's, it's a beloved instant, you know, it's a beloved place there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people read about it and, and everybody, you know, talks about it. And so, yes, it could be, you know, it, it's a delight to, to eat there, even, you know, if you think it's like something that every, you know, it's well known and it's been, you know, popularized. And But it's just, it's good. It's such good food and it's such a really unique experience. So sometimes you have to, you know, think about, you see something that's very popular popular with visitors or whatever and you you think to yourself oh is it you know is it going to be you know a touristy kind of thing but you know i I would you know i would caution and and think to yourself you know okay maybe this is really something special because people really are raving about it you know well that that's a thing that's a thing i mean it's like there yeah i mean it's they this is a city that has been there since time you know Right. It's not a city. It doesn't feel like a city to me. It's been a town that's been there for so long, pre-Civil War, and it's con- continued. I mean, they have a school. They have a community, and people forget that when it's part of a park. You know, Hot of Springs, course. the same thing. You went to Hot Springs? Yeah. You know, here's yeah. a national yeah. park within a city. It's like, yeah. you know, the town yeah. was there yeah. before yeah. Hot Springs became a park, you know, and it's like it's part of it. and you're going to have great restaurants in these places. I kind of, you know, there's the, um, the purists of like parks should have none of this, you know, but that you, what are you going to do? Uplift a community. The fact is it's important to have community connected to parks. And I yeah. love it when that happens because you understand the greater story. If of you course. visit the community, you of know, course. it's like the, the, like the musician I was telling you about Leah Waybright. Um, uh, interviewed her and she grew up in Gettysburg, went to school in Gettysburg, you know, and I mean, that history was a real deal for her. I mean, sure. if you're going to have local history, holy cow, you know, like yeah. you're in Santa Fe. If you went to high school in Santa Fe, my God, your, your yeah. local history is a little like intense, you know, Absolutely. and big. So I think it's, important to understand the communities that are connected to these parks and that's why i love that you've done these two stories um i wish they were together but like that you know all of our reading spans don't do that but it's reality of it it it's um you know go to parks but connect with the communities because the communities are connected with the parks and the history they're shared uh for example sequoia national park you went to sequoia national park um, right. I don't, did you get to, um, there's a meadow and I always call it paradise meadow and it's not uh crescent meadow. It's my favorite meadow on the planet. Yes. Um, and it's beautiful and there's always a mommy deer and babies yes. every single time. Yeah. And there's bears where we saw a mama bear with three cubs and um, wow. <clears throat> it's just magical, but Barb's log is there and he is a rancher that used to bring his cattle up from Three Rivers down the hill. Like, if you've gone to Sequoia National Park from Three Rivers up all the way up, right? You've been there. You, it's a mountain pass. Yeah. By the way, done by Charles Young, the very first uh, Buffalo soldier. 
<clears throat> he created that. And it was, a, I'm not the very first Buffalo soldier, but the first park super African-American park superintendent who was also a Buffalo soldier. But mm. he is the one who made that road happen. Um, but Tharp would bring his cattle up to graze in that pasture or what right. was a meadow now. Um, and he lived in a sequoia tree during that time frame. The, wow. A fallen sequoia tree, this hollow sequoia tree he lived in. Now, <laughs> if you're going to tell me that doesn't connect you back to the people, like you're talking about the lady who got shot while she's making bread during Gettysburg, right. that right. you can't, you have to do that. And I think that's the beauty of the story you yes. brought back, you know? Yeah, I, I, I do think that's, like I said, connecting with the people that actually live there at one time as well as connecting with people that actually live there now, you know, whether it's, Mm -hmm. you know, with, with guides that you meet, whether it's with innkeepers, whether it's shopkeepers and people that have lived there, you know, most of their lives or all of their lives and grown up there. And, uh, you know, the human element I think is important everywhere in the world. When you travel, I think it's important to connect with the people that live there in the place you get a, you get a really different, uh, or a more, I think, a richer angle and a richer depth to to the destination. Did you feel that way staying at the inn when you yes. were there? It was great. Yeah. I'd had a, I had a nice conversation with the innkeeper and the innkeeper's wife, and I talked, you know, I asked them about, you know, moving there and raising the, raising three children there. And, oh, you know, wow. Just about the community and, and how much they, they – they love the community. They love the the uh, the small town feel of the community. They love the history. Uh, you know, they love the schools are so good. They, you know, they love they love the bounty of agriculture and what they can find there. And so they're you know they're they're so happy uh, being there and have made their home there for so many years now. But you know, that's the kind of story. That's the kind of kind of information that is fascinating to hear. You know, it's like, what is it like to live here? You know, why did you why did you come here? Why did you move here? And also, you know, why you know why stay here? What it, what you know what keeps you here? You know. Mm, mm. Well, I want to give everyone a main link is destinationgettysburg dot com. Again, um, that will also be in our show notes. Uh, so just go look no matter where you're listening from YouTube, Gettys, I was say YouTube or Gettysburg, YouTube or Spotify <laughs> or, you know, Google, wherever. Uh, right. just look in the show notes. The links will be there and also to Debbie's two articles, which have more links. So you can plan your adventure in Gettysburg. And I say adventure, you know, it, it, it like we were talking about, it's deep, overwhelming history, but there's a lot of fun to be had too. So. Oh, absolutely. Go and have a good time and also reflect that, holy cow, we don't want this stuff to happen again. So let's, let's, let's stick with the food stuff and, and not have the civil war again. And I, I think that's the other thing about going to these places is to acknowledge those who lost their lives and also hope like, Hey, let's think about peace and, and, um, unity. And that's, it, it's so important. Um, yeah. I would, I wish Lincoln was alive now. <laughs> I just do. So anyway, yeah. um, destination gettysburg.com. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Debbie. As always, she brings amazing stories back. She has so many cool adventures and you can keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Debbie is here every, uh, fourth Tuesday. Thank you, Fire Monkey. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Big Blend Radio's Global Adventures Show with travel writer Debbie Stone. Debbie is here every fourth Tuesday. You can keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com.